Madam uh, Mike Wagenheim with I-24 News. It's been a while since we've last spoken. Um, a couple questions for you. In your report, uh, you have a line in here that says that since its establishment, Israel has uh, treated the occupied people as a hated encumbrance and threat to be eradicated, and you go on uh, listing other items. Um, we'll leave aside the contextual and factual debate about that. Based on that statement, it seems to infer that you believe that Israel has been an occupier since the day of its birth. Is that your position? You said since its establishment, Israel has treated occupied people, etc. Are you inferring that Israel has been an occupier since 1948? Why do you have to infer instead of sticking to what I said? And I'm, I'm asking, a, that's what's in there. Let me, let me elaborate. Okay. Um, Israel has taken, and we can, I can concede that it has done it with, uh, with the recognition of the General Assembly, but from a human rights law point of view, and as I take a people-centered approach, I cannot, uh, I cannot forget it, the creation of the State of Israel has meant the dispossession of uh, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians of, who have been kicked out of their homes and never allowed to return. Why so? And um, is it, does it make it an occupier? It makes a state, it makes of Israel a state who has uh, forcible, forcibly displaced a uh, significant part of the native population. And this is the past that has never been addressed. The Palestinians with Israeli citizenship who remained in Israel have been kept for two decades under military rule. And this is why when I, mm -hmm, uh, when I, when I say an encumbrance, I was not even referring to them, but as you ask, I mean, this is documented, so it's not debatable, it's, it's history. And since 1967, which is what I'm most interested in because of the mandate I have, Israel has continued, has continued these practices, has extended the, the custodianship system that had been used to take control of all the properties left behind by the Palestinian refugees, but without time limit. So from 1967, I think this is military order 5058, or one of, one of the early military orders, Israel has been able to, to seize and acquire all the, all the property left behind by the Palestinians. The 350,000 who were forcibly displaced outside the occupied Palestinian territory in 1967, and the hundreds of thousands who have been kicked out of their homes and lands ever since. So there's been a continuity. So it's not just about what has been happening in the occupied Palestinian territory for the past 57 years. It's the fact that, unfortunately, there is a continuity with patterns of conduct that had already been enacted in, uh, in, in modern-day Israel. I'm, I'm not sure that answers a question, but it will have to suffice. One other question for you, because I know my colleagues want to jump in here. You know about the controversy surrounding your positions and your statements. Uh, I'm not going to repeat them here. But you did comment on social media within the past week. And I'm going to read this back. You said, I'm profoundly committed to human rights for all people. How could I ever be an anti-Semite? Uh, a few days ago, you were supposed to have a briefing with members of Congress. Uh, that briefing was canceled. I don't know if the, the Jewish lobby was behind it or not, but... Oh, you said Jewish lobby. Jewish lobby. Watch out, because it's very anti-Semitic, apparently. It is. I, 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 was, I didn't uh, use it. You did. I don't know who you feel was behind it. Um, in any case, uh, you appeared, and your appearance there was sponsored by a group called Code Pink. You appeared in a video with the co-founder of Code Pink. Code Pink, well-documented, shills for some of the world's worst human rights violators. Maduro, Iran, where they appeared with Holocaust deniers, they deny the genocide going on in China of the Uyghur population, completely deny it. How can you say, appearing with a group like that, that you stand and are committed for human rights for all people and are not an anti-Semite? This group is drawn to you and you happily appear with them while they shill for human rights abusers all over the world and only focus in on Israel. 
According to this principle, I shouldn't be asking questions from, uh, from journalists, for example, unless I check their pedigree. And I explained to you, because I was not at an event hosted by Good Pink, check your sources, because this is not correct. I was it is hosted. That you appeared in a video with the co founder. Can I finish? Sure, you can. I was speaking at an event organized by, by um, at uh, Buzz Boys and Poets, a venue. I've always, uh, where I've always attended wonderful talks, then if they have hosted uh, people who have terrible records, I don't know, but I wouldn't feel responsible. And as I was, um, as I was on my way out and looking at the Morales, uh, Medea from Code Pink approached me and said, can I ask you a question? And I said, of course, do you mind being on record? Of course, of course not. And that is it. Now, do you want to add on the, on the allegations against me because I gave a, I answer a question to Medea Benjamin, or do I have to check, to do a background check or any person I talk to you in order no, to You assuage. have no idea who Code Pink is? Of you course. You have no prior contact with them? Of course I know who Code Pink is, and I, but I don't, apparently I'm not as informed as you are. Thank you for educating me. That's part of my job as a journalist. Thank you.